All right, so let's head on over to Pattern Lab. Let's have a look here. Okay, let's go Pattern Lab. So this is obviously our homepage once it loads. So um, I've obviously logged in to my account and I already have a profile set up for Francesca, which is here. And I've basically entered all of her measurements that are required to draft all the blocks with Pattern Lab. And we have a measurement video tutorial that shows you how to do that. And we also have tutorials that show you how to use the lab. I'm just gonna go through this very quickly based on how to draft Francesca's, or the initial basic blocks for Francesca's robe based on her measurements. So once we have our measurements, I'm going to go draft block. Uh, let me just clear all of this. Okay. So we're going to go for, first of all, the bodice. So let's have a look at our illustration. So this illustration, as you can see, this robe is made up of three, let's say, pieces. We have the bodice, we have the sleeve, and we also have this skirt. And this is separate, so we're not using a dress block, we're using a bodice gathered into a fitted skirt block. So let's go on to the lab. I'm going to create the bodice using, oops, let's choose Francesca's profile, very important. I'm going to go for the bodice, I'm going to go for the fit, I'm going to go for waist shaping, I'm then going to choose a fit. I'm going to go for a custom ease, and here I'm just going to add in my eases. Okay, so if you're not quite sure what eases are, that's fine. You can either read a little bit more about the drop down here, or we have tutorials that show you or explain a little bit more about this. But as I said, I'm just going to run through this. Okay, I'm going to go for eight bust ease. Francesca, that's quite a decent, well-fitting, comfortable ease around the bust, uh, but I'm also going to go for 10 centimeters for the waist ease. Now the reason why this is so large, and you'll see the pattern adjust in a minute, and in fact let's go slightly no, 10, is because, if we go back to our illustration, uh, there we go, you can see that um, we have a slight amount of gathering that actually goes into the skirt. So the bust, sorry, the bodice block is going to be slightly larger than our skirt, and then we're going to gather that into the skirt block. So we want to make the waist ease quite large, so it'll be 10 centimeters larger than her actual waistline, uh, which is fab. So 8 and 10 is perfect. Let's click next. And we go for the front. So I'm going to go for no seam on the front. I'm also going to go for the classic dart manipulation. And the reason why is because we want loads of space here that we can gather into that skirt block. So we're going to gather all that dart and the excess waisties into the skirt block. I'm going to click next to go to the back. For the seam, we're going to go no seam and we're going to go for the mid shoulder. So once again, we're going to be gathering all of this into that skirt block and the sleeve comes as drafted. So let's just click next to the sleeve. I'm going to use um, the sleeve cappies of two centimeters. I'm going to leave that as is and I'm then going to basically, uh, let's say pattern cut or uh, manipulate the sleeve into our beautiful lantern shape in Adobe Illustrator when I start pattern cutting. So I'm just going to leave this as is, click next. And here I can add different seam allowances if I wish, but because I'm going to be digitally editing this in Adobe Illustrator, I'm going to be using the ePattern, which is basically a digitally downloadable editable file, an SVG which opens in Adobe Illustrator. This comes with no seam allowance. If you want to use the manual version using paper pattern cutting, you can always print out the PDF pattern. Okay, This is not editable in Adobe Illustrator, it's simply for printing on paper. So I'm just going to add the ePattern to my cart. As you can see down the bottom here, this just gives you all the information that's associated with this block, so busties 8, waisties 10, sleeve cafes, etc. So next, what else do we need? We need the skirt. So let's have a look. We need this, a really, it's a basic skirt block with a really long line down to the floor. So let's have a look in the lab. Let's go to skirts. And so obviously I don't want these ones, I want my basic skirt, because it's fitted, and it's pretty much a uh, long line and thin fitted to the body. Let's go fit. I'm going to go for custom fit, and I'm going to give the, the waisties a comfortable, let's say, 2cm, and the hippies about 4. So it should be quite a comfortable fit, shouldn't be too tight, and let's just click next. Now the length, we're going to go for the floor length. And this is calculated from Francesca's measurements because we've added them to the profile. So this automatically calculates the length of her waist to floor and adds it to this dress. You can also add in the skirt length if you wish. Um, in fact, essentially what we could do is go 107.5, which is the maximum length. And that will just give us a little bit of extra when it comes to the back of her dress. But you know what? I'm actually not going to do that. I'm going to add that in pattern cutting. I'm going to just go for the floor length so I know what the front length will be. Click next. I'm going to go for the front. I'm going to go for no seam on the front and we're going to go for the V yoke style. As you can see here, it's now been changed. It's not a dramatic V yoke, but we can change that when pattern cutting in Adobe Illustrator. And the reason why I'm adding this is because we have this little V yoke on the front. I'm just going to go next and go to the back and no seam once again. I'm going to go to the V yoke and this one actually has a more dramatic back. Uh, v, which is great.
so I shouldn't have to change that too much. Let's go next. And we're going to have no waistband. And the reason why is because essentially we're going to be attaching this. Hang on. We're going to be attaching this to our bodice block. So we don't actually need a waistband in there. It's not a separate skirt. It is joined to our bodice. Great. So let's go on to purchase. That's pretty much it. Uh, I'm not going to obviously use seam allowances. I'm not going to get the PDF. I'm going to get the e-pattern so I can um, yeah, pattern cut or edit it digitally in Adobe Illustrator. I'm going to click add to cart. Okay, so I now have two in my cart. I'm going to go to checkout. Now, obviously, I'm an admin, so luckily for me, no payments required. I'm going to click, I've read the terms and conditions, and also we have so the bodice block, back set and sleeve, and basic skirt. This is just simply a breakdown of what you're ordering, and also what profile is being used, so check these to make sure they're correct. I'm going to click confirm. All right, okay, so now we've pretty much made payment. Uh, we now are able to edit, preview, and download. So I'm going to edit the bodice block first, or at least download it first. And you can actually edit your measurements here and go back if you need to, to change those up. Um, but I'm really happy with this block. I'm going to click download. I'm just going to save it on my desktop or in a folder. Essentially, I've already saved these in Francesca's robe initial sample. But I'm just going to save them on my desktop just to show you. And you can rename these. Let's call it Francesca Bodice. And click save. And then let's go back, and let's go to the skirt. We can edit and preview that as well. So once again, you can edit your measurements if you need to. You can also add notes if you really want to about this particular draft. And that's looking fab. I'm going to download that as well. Save it to my desktop, but this time call it skirt. And save. Great, so we're pretty much finished in the lab now, which is fantastic. So I'm just going to simply close this down, or minimize it at least. There we go. I'm going to go into Adobe Illustrator and I'm just going to simply grab this illustration. Sorry. So this is my illustration of the garment. I'm going to use it as uh, something to work from. So I'm just going to copy it. I'm going to create a new document. And I'm going to make it, I work in centimeters. I pattern cut in centimeters, obviously, because I'm in the UK, but you could use inches, I guess. Let's go centimeters. I'm going to make it 400 cm by 400 cm. That'll give me a space that's 400 centimeters by 400 centimeters. And we're pattern cutting in full scale here. So you've got a lovely space to work with. Let's just create. I'm just going to paste in that illustration and then scale it up. And that's going to be, it's going to help me when it comes to pattern cutting. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply go to my desktop where I saved those, uh, let's say, the, the blocks from Pattern Lab that the Pattern Lab has created. I'm just going to simply click on both of those and open them up in Adobe Illustrator. And these are all full size. We're not scaling anything here. So first we have our skirt block and then we have Let's zoom out our bodice block, which is awesome. What I'm going to do is I'm going to simply, big section tool, click and drag and grab all of these. I'm going to copy it and paste it into my initial sample board. And you can see how big this page is, okay, four meters by four meters. Let's just move this across a little bit. Now, I'm not showing you how to do this tutorial because, or how to actually pattern cut this, because this is the initial sample. And we're going to have a tutorial that shows you exactly how to do this, but with your size range or your unique measurements for this exact row, which is cool. I'm just showing you the kind of process of what I'm going through to kind of create the initial sample and doing it from uh, just eyeballing it, really. So first of all, let's have a look at this front panel. So let's just move this over. Let's grab the front panel. First of all, let's just... I'm going to unlock all that. Let's just move that off to the side. We can also get rid of some of this text. We can also take this out as well. OK, so we have this coming from the neckline pretty much to this point, or about a centimeter either side of the center point. So what I want to do is, let's get my pen tool. I'm going to go from the side neck to the center point. And I'm just going to curve that line ever so slightly. Fab. Let's just make that an actual pattern line. Then let's, I'm going to run through this really quickly with you. And then let's just create that as a dash line. OK, great. What else does this pattern actually have? So we have this ruching here, which means we kind of need to remove this dart completely. So let's just remove the dart. OK, but also we need to make this edge nice and smooth so it gathers together. So I'm just going to snip. Let's join this one. Let's make that pretty much a 90 degree angle. Let's also do the same on the opposite side. Let's make that about a 90 degree angle. Let's move that down ever so slightly. There we go. And you can get rid of these lines, but I'm going to keep them in anyway. OK, that's all joined up. Great, let's just unify it. So that is essentially our front.
And what I'm going to do is, let's just make a gather line effect. Where is it? Sort transform, zigzag. Okay, let's have a look. Let's preview this. Size can be smaller. Quite a few more of these. Let's smooth it out. Size can be much smaller. Okay. Then let's go and add some arrowheads. This is just notation on the block, just to say gather into waistline. Smashing. I mean, if you want to see the actual finished uh, sample, then I would suggest going to the very, very end of this tutorial. Otherwise, if you really want to see this, you can see this. Okay, so that's essentially our front block, which is looking fab. So now let's crack on with the sleeve. No, actually, let's do the back block. I'm also just going to put these back on that block just to keep them consistent. Let's make that a little bit smaller. Lovely, let's just group that block. Okay, let's go to the back. Right, now what's going on with the back? Okay, I have to kind of like make this up because I haven't actually got a back illustration, but I'm really happy to do that. Let's just remove some of this information so we've got a free block to work with. Oops. Right, first of all, I'm going to do exactly the same with the back that I did with the front. I'm just going to make this smooth. I'm going to remove that back dart pretty much completely. So I'm just drawing a curvy line from these two points and making this 90 degrees and 90 degrees. I'm then just going to cut out that existing dart. I'm going to keep it greyed out or at least dashed so I can see what's going on. Or I can always refer back to it later. It's always good to do that. There we go. Let's just join that line to the block. And then next, let's work on this top panel here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I want to have a beautiful chevron at the back, which will kind of like match this chevron shape here. It should be quite pretty. So what I'm going to do next is let's just find the center of that dart. It's a little bit naughty. I should actually work this out. But to be fair, this will work fine because the top is actually quite relaxed. So I'm just basically, I've drawn a line from the armhole to the back. I'm then just going to extend that dart down. I'm going to then remove that item. Then let's just cut this panel here. Let's then unify it. Let's also snip here and let's unify this one. Let's go in. I'm quite enjoying this very, very fast paced tutorial. It certainly makes a difference from all the other ones. Uh, then let's just unify those blocks. There we go. Let's also remove that little nick. And then let's also create a nice smooth line here. So I'm going to join this point to this point. And I'm just going to create a nice, oops, that didn't work. There we go, let's unify that. And let's just create, that didn't work either. Let's create, there we go, a nice smooth curve. And I'm using that line, that guideline there, just to create that curve. There we go. I can get rid of the existing one if I need to. Okay, so that's now our dart. And in fact, Let's make that a little bit more obtuse or acute. There we go. Okay, so that's now my back chevron panel. And I basically moved the dart into this, uh, let's say, armhole here. And we can now separate that block off. Let's put in our information. Same with this one here. We can put in this grain line. It's always very important to keep your grain lines you know, consistent with your block, especially when it comes to cutting it and printing it later or sorry, printing and then cutting it later. We don't need all that information just yet, and I'm going to change these titles later. Okay, so that's the back pretty much complete, and once again, we're going to use this gather into waistline concept. Let's just do... Ooh, move it up a little bit. There we go. Lovely. Move it down ever so slightly. Gather into waistline. Fab, let's put that back. And let's always remember to group your blocks. Okay, hang on, we've got a lot of grouping going on here. Let's ungroup that one first. Ungroup again. Okay, that's great. Let's get all the elements, group them. I'm using lots of sh keyboard shortcuts here. Let's group. Okay, so now we have the back and the front. I'm just going to outline these so we can know for a fact. Okay. That can go, that can be, there we go. I'm just going to give these slightly thicker line fills so you can actually see 
that these are pattern pieces as opposed to all the other bits. All right, so let's play around with the sleeves. So let's just ungroup it. Let's move this out. Same with this one. And get rid of the other line. We can also get rid of these slash lines. Slash line. And we can also get rid of all that as well. The gather two. Okay, so this we have actually, we've got quite a lot going on with this sleeve. It's quite a statement sleeve. So here we have a princess um, top. Then we have this really beautiful sort of like flared bell shaped bottom sleeve and we also have this like beautiful little cuff and it kind of comes to the um, let's say the wrist line here but I'm actually going to play around with this the length of this in uh, once it's been twirled so I'm just going to keep this sleeve the length that it is but first of all there's a few things I need to do to create this uh, this concept. So the first thing to create a princess sleeve, which is really, really simple but it does take a little bit of time. So first of all I reckon well we've got this piece coming in here and we essentially we've got volume here, volume here and then a narrowness here. So I'm going to say well I want my narrowness to start roughly about I don't know let's see about four let's say five cm down so about five cm down from the sleeve or the underarm of the sleeve and I want the the narrowness to be about here and then the volume and I'm just eyeballing this to be a little bit further down so I think maybe that is a good maybe let's move it down a little bit that's a good balance, I think, when it comes to the sleeve. So we have volume at the top, thin, and then volume here at the bottom, which is fab. Also, what I want to do here is I possibly want to make this more of a lantern sleeve, where we have this kind of effect. Yeah, it's probably a better idea. It'll look better and perform better, I think. So in that case, we're going to have one more line, which is essentially the cuff. Okay, so we have volume at the top, we have thinness here, we then have more volume here, and then we have this other panel, which is going to be at the bottom here. And let's just make that slightly higher. There we go. So I'm just I'm eyeballing it, but essentially I will have a look at this when it comes to sampling uh, or actually creating this toile. So first of all, let's um, actually cut this block up into its panels. So I'm going to cut the top here. I'm going to cut this middle section. I'm also going to cut this lower section too. And this one. Now let's just join this. So this will be the lower part of the sleeve. This will be the volume part of the sleeve. Join. This will be the upper thin section of the sleeve. I'm just joining these. There we go. So now we have we have a whole bunch of different sections here, which is great. Let's just then lock the top, group it, because we want to make sure that those little points are still in place. And now we're going to start to separate this sleeve up. Okay, so I need to actually splay this sleeve out. If any of you are familiar with pattern cutting, you'll know what I'm talking about. But otherwise, you can just simply have a look and see what you think. So I'm going to create some lines here just to create some segmentation. And let's do it here as well, here as well, and here as well. And let's do that. Okay, let's take all of these. And then what I'm doing is I'm going to distribute these evenly. And that is apparently evenly. Uh, although I'm not a fan of that because I want that line to be in the center there. So I'm going to keep it exactly as it is without centering or distributing any of those. And let's just make these slightly longer. Let's take these all the way down to the bottom as well. In fact, no, what we'll do is we will take... Once again, I will show you this tutorial in full depth, uh, in depth when we actually come to producing this pattern for you guys to make. But the time being, I'm just simply showing you the process of what I'm going through and the fact that I'm eyeballing it a little bit. Okay, so we are not going to touch this middle section because it's quite thin, but we are going to expand this section, this section, and also this section. And to do that, what I'm going to do is, let's get rid of these. I'm going to go Object, not Expand Weight. We need to turn these into lines. Object, Expand. Okay. Great. Now I'm going to take this first panel here first of all. And I'm just going to remove this one. And then this one. I'm just simply separate using this line here to separate these out. Hang on a minute. So I'm using this object line here to basically cut these block, this upper block in half. Oops. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And I'll show you how to do this in the later tutorial. can be a little bit time consuming, but once you've got it, you've got it. 
And it's just like essentially cutting and slashing on a piece of paper anyway. It would probably take about the same amount of time. Oops. Ugh. Please work. Yeah, good. Okay, once again, that needs to go below. This little line goes on top, then we cut it. Okay, let's make this slightly thinner so we can actually see what's going on here. Fab, this is the top section. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let's just grab all this information. I'm going to move this up ever so slightly. Now, if you look at my actual pattern here, I've got quite a lot of gathering at the top and very little around the armhole. So I want to essentially spread this, slash and spread it by a large amount at the top, but less on the sides here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to eyeball this once again. I'm just going to go to my line tool. I'm just going to click. I'm going to go 0.5 cm, which you can draw a little line that's about 0.5 cm from that side point. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this panel here. I'm going to use the rotation tool. I'm going to click on that point. I'm going to rotate it out. So I'm only spreading that by 0.5. Here, I'm going to go for, mm, let's go for also one, let's also go for 0.5. But this time I'm going to take both of these panels. I'm going to rotate both of them out. So you see now we're kind of like slashing and spreading. And then this one, let's do it on the opposite side as well. Let's do the same to the opposite side. So minus 0.0, no, that's 0.5. And the angle is going to be 180. Yeah. OK. Let's take this panel here. Ungroup them first. Take this panel. Click on that. Rotate it. Nope. I've got to ungroup it first. Rotate it out. Let's go to the next one. Let's take both of these. Let's hit the rotation tool, rotate around that point, and rotate it out. OK, so next, I'm going to go for, I think, 1 cm. Mm, let's make it 1.5. OK. We're also going to do the same on the opposite side. We're going to slash that by 1.5. I'm going to take these panels here. I'm going to rotate it around that bottom point. Rotate out. So we're getting a lot more volume in this top panel here. Same with these ones. Let's go to rotate, and let's just rotate that out. Great. OK, now it comes for the main event, which is the top panel here. So I'm going to go 2.5 cm on the top, which is quite large. Just eyeballing it, I mean, we could essentially have a look at this, feel that there's too much volume, and then reduce this when we come to the second toile. Or we feel maybe there's too much volume here, we could always reduce it. So this is 2 cm, 1 cm either side. I'm going to grab this bunch here. I'm going to rotate it. I'm going to take all of this. I'm going to rotate it around that bottom panel, and then move it out. OK, that needs to now go to the top, because that's essentially the shoulder notch. That can go, this can go. OK, so now this is our slash and spread of the armhole, which will give us this beautiful princess shape, and hopefully it will be large enough. And next what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my, arm, my sleeve head in, OK, because I can't really use that one. I've got to basically draw in a new sleeve head. So I'm just going to essentially trace the existing lines, trying to make them similar to... Now, there's a little bit of leeway here, because essentially we're going to be gathering, so we've got a little bit of leeway, but I'm going to go for that. Okay, let's do also, let's just make these a bit more invisible. Let's go to this point here, let's go down to this point, and let's just, ooh, there we go, about there. But this one needs to be tweaked ever so slightly. There we go. I'm trying to get as close to these points as possible. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. Probably do with a little bit more shaping. Okay, so that is essentially my new sleeve head. <coughs> okay, let's then make it a bold line. And we can... Let's leave that. So now, essentially, this panel, I'm not doing anything to this panel whatsoever because it's going to remain exactly the same as my existing sleeve. Okay, It's going to be thin here, which is the same size as the sleeve that we've actually drafted with Pattern Lab. What I am going to do is just grab this, and I'm going to move it down until it kind of intersects. There you go, that's the lowest edge. I'm going to move it down to that point so it intersects. Okay, so we're adding a little bit of volume here to basically make room for this top let's say, uh, gathering or princess pleating. OK, so next what we're going to do is we're going to do the same for both of these panels. So let's just move this in the centre, get this one centralised. Same with this one. Let's then make all of those lines undashed object and then expand them. I'm going to do exactly the same technique here. 
I'm actually going to need two of them. So, let's grab this and this. Oops, let's just lock that down. Let's grab this one and this one. Let's go to... There we go. We're going to ungroup that, send it to the back. Okay, hang on. I'm going to probably speed this process up because it does take a little bit of time. If someone knows how to do this, uh, has a better technique of doing this, then I would love to hear it. We've got some really interesting feedback actually from people who have been watching the pattern cutting tutorials, so it's really good to share this kind of information. But essentially I'm just splitting this using the Pathfinder tool. Okay, great, that's the top done, so next we're going to do the bottom. I'm going to separate it pretty much exactly the same way. In fact, you know what I could do? Let's just uh, lock that down. Let's take this panel here. Let's copy it. And then let's just shrink it. There you go. That's a much quicker way of doing it. And let's just get rid of all the existing gumph. There we go. Okay, so let's ungroup them. Let's bring this in and make it perfect. Okay. Yeah, great. Okay, I'm just going to move these down ever so slightly. Get them out of the way. There we go. Okay, so first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spread this sleeve. I'm going to open it up, okay, to really get that volume in there. So what we're doing is keeping this bit small and we're just spreading it like we did at the top just to open that sleeve up. So the way we do this is... Uh, so I'm going to say, I want quite a lot of volume here, so I'm going to go one centimeter. Okay, I'm going to spread this by one centimeter. Exactly the same way we did in the top, but I'm going to do it uniformly for all of them. So let's take this one. Let's rotate it around that point and spread it out. Let's then go to the next one. Let's then grab these two, rotate it, spread. This is a much easier process. Easier, quicker. And let's go to the center. Let's take all of these, rotate, oops, rotate, spread. Uh, same with this side. There's going to be a 2cm one in the middle here, but that's fine. I don't mind a bit of extra volume there. Oh, hang on, no, we need to do this side first of all. Let's do it in sequence. It's important. So then, let's ungroup those. Let's grab this. I'm just going to rotate this out. Move it along. Take these two, rotate them out. Let's go to this panel, rotate, oops, click the rotation point, rotate out, and then here we have the last or final rotation. I'm going to rotate that out. Great, so we have two in the center. Okay, I'm just going to group those. I'm just going to move it down so that it literally butts up against this top panel here, okay? So once again, we're adding a bit more volume here, which is great. So now you can see the sleeve is starting to take shape. And maybe I need to increase the size of these, maybe to 1.5, depending on how much volume I want, or maybe reduce it. I'm going to do exactly the same with these ones now. Okay? So once again, get my line. I'm going to go 1 cm. Let's just move that over. Let's make it bold so we can see it. Then let's rotate this bottom panel out. Move that along. Rotate. A little bit fiddly. Rotate that out. Okay. Let's do the opposite side here. Okay. Oops, that's grouped. Let's ungroup it. Let's go to rotation tool. And that's in the wrong place. Let's move it over. There we go. Let's move this out. Rotation, out. And finally, we're going to do this one as well, because we want that 2cm in the center. Oops, be careful not to do it too much. And then we're going to group these. Okay, so now let's build our sleeve. This is looking fab. 
So essentially this upper panel is all one piece, okay? If you look at this sleeve, now we're having this lantern. This is all one piece and then the lantern is slightly separate. So I'm now going to draw in my sleeve. I'm going to go pretty much, let's go halfway along this line here to this point. Let's take it to the center of that sleeve to this point. Let's find the center here and here as well. Now let's just check that that is actually the center. You see it's slightly off? That's okay, we can just select both those points and then adjust. Okay, so now I'm just going to use my curve tool. I'm just going to curve that to make it a really beautiful sleeve. And actually, you know what? To make this really perfect, I'm going to cut that side piece out. I'm going to take this, oops, I'm going to take this, <laughs> this panel here, or this side, and I'm going to compare it, not compare it, I'm going to actually copy and paste it to the opposite side so we get a perfect curve on both sides so they join up beautifully. Transform, reflect, and then copy, and then move this across. And it's never going to be exactly perfect, but we could always move that up ever so slightly. A bit naughty, but still. Let's just average those, and then let's join them. Same with the bottom here. Let's just change that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull these out so we get a nice line that kind of intersects. Okay, let's do the same for the bottom. Click. I'm going to find the center. Edge. Edge. Center. Edge. Edge. And then, oops. And then let's just draw that line. Let's also draw the bottom line here as well, trying to keep the existing template as best as possible. Now let's actually check the length of these. I'm just going to cut that top line away from the rest of the block. And let's go to Document Info. Let's go to Objects. That is 39.3. And this one is 39.4. So they're pretty spot on, uh, which means that should go together pretty perfectly. Let's just uh, lock that together. Let's also do the same for this one. I'm just going to join these now. Join. Can be a little bit fiddly sometimes. Join. And then we can just unite. Perfect. Okay, so that is our sleeve block, which is looking fab. Let's actually look at our cuff now. So I am not only doing a lantern sleeve, but I'm actually having some gathers in there as well. So now at the moment, this lower edge of the sleeve block is how many centimeters? 31, which is great. Now, I think Francesca's uh, wrist width is, let's go to profiles quickly. It's great, you can always have a look at your measurements online. Let's go to Francesca, and where's her sleeve? Sorry, wrist width. Where are you? Wrist, so it's 15 centimeters. So essentially, uh, this is twice the width of her wrist, which is great, which means you've got plenty to gather into that cuff. So let's just now make our cuff. And I'm going to create a box, and I'm going to go, let's make it 17, so it's 2cm. No, let's make it 16.5, so 1.5cm larger than her wrist. Is that correct? Let's just check. Wrist, 15. Yeah, so 1.5 larger than her wrist, and I'm going to make it about mm, 2.5cm deep. Click OK. So that's essentially going to be our cuff. And I'm going to make two of these because we're going to be folding this over. Let's just unite. There we go. Let's put a nice let's put a nice fold line in there. Great. And also I want to have a little placket. Okay, so something actually crosses over that you can actually attach a button to. So I'm just going to go 2.5 by 2.5. There we go. I'm just going to move that down there as well. Let's just unite these two. So that's my placket. That's essentially going to overlap. Okay, so I can have my button here. I'm just going to then join these two together. And then let's just put in a little dash line to show that that's the placket. And the fold line continues through. Great. So that is essentially our cuff created and our sleeve created. Next, we're going to get onto the really complicated, well, it's kind of complicated, uh, complicated job of working on the actual skirt panel for this um, project. So I'm going to stop the tutorial there just so I can have a little bit of a break, and we'll get back to that in a minute. Okay, so now that we've actually produced our, uh, let's say, the bodice design and also the back, so the front and back here, we've also produced our sleeve and also the lantern shape at the bottom and also our cuff. We're now, as I said, going to move on to our skirt design. Now, this is a little bit more complicated, so what I've done is created some illustrations to show you how this opening and this skirt is actually going to work.
So you can see here on the left hand side we have our garment and these are essentially like spec drawings. They give us an idea and understanding of how this garment might operate but using let's say patterns or illustrations. So over here on the left you can see that the, uh, let's just ungroup this, as you can see here on the left, let me just group these up, this is essentially this panel here and as you can see it comes down from the neck, uh, it has a central let's say neckline that it uh, comes across the body and then opens up at the side here with buttons and it has a split. So essentially um, we need to create this side opening. Now it's a little bit complicated because essentially we have this front open here. If it came all the way across we wouldn't have a problem or if maybe it opened at the center it would be very simple. So at this point in time I'm going to take this panel here. So as you can see we have uh, this whole blue panel on the left hand side. So this is the central neck. It goes across to the right hand side and then comes down and then our split would be here. Now if we were to use uh, that pattern, so let's just remove that, so if we were to have this pattern and just simply copy and paste it, uh, or in other words, use it for the opposite side as well, we would have something that looks like this, which is this kind of like tulip shape. And the side opening is there, but unfortunately you won't see the split at the side. It will actually double over. And so essentially here is that kind of open or expanded view. So this is our back panel in black. This is our right panel on the left hand side of my screen and the uh, the left hand side on the right hand side of my screen. So as you can see when these two fold over you get this middle opening here. Okay, It's a side opening but we don't get a split. So this pattern isn't going to work which means we have to have two separate sides uh, to our garment. Now give me one second. Let me just fill that with a bit of white. Okay that's better. So now we have a new concept for the pattern which uses this the same let's say shape when it comes to the left hand side here uh, or the right hand side of her dress and to get this little split actually opening here down the side of the dress what we're doing is we're basically swinging this we're removing a lot of this area here and swinging it over to uh, let's say just on this side not closest to the side seam so when these two close together you have this front panel um, yeah this overlapping front panel and then let's just take this block as well Let's just group that, let's give it a white fill, and then if I basically bring that to the top, you can see it works just as well. I should have prepped this a little bit better, hang on, there we go. So that is essentially, so if we overlap them, this would be the left hand side which overlaps, and then if we take the opposite side, uh, you can see that this little cutout section here creates that beautiful side, or that, that split just over the thigh. And so essentially this is the pattern that we want to create. Okay, um, so without this illustration or this spec drawing, it might be a little bit complicated to pattern draft this just by thinking about it. So this is why I've kind of created this illustration. And I hope that makes sense to you what we're actually doing here. Okay, so with this in mind, I'm going to take this illustration, I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to paste it just next to my um, skirt pattern. Okay, it's quite large, this drawing. It's actually almost the same size as my pattern. So let's just have a look at this. Okay, so this is what I kind of need to replicate. But first of all, um, with this skirt block here, you can see that my front, so this is the back and this is the front. You can see that this front panel, let me just make these a little bit darker so you can see. You can see this front panel hasn't really got much of a V shape to it. Now we want this really lovely 1920s kind of like um, chevron. So I'm just going to adapt this block slightly to have that really beautiful, let's say, point at the front. And to do this, I'm going to show you a really interesting or handy little trick. So I'm going to go from this corner here, because it's obviously where my shuffle is going to start. And I'm going to, let's say, just go down, I don't know, probably about 10 centimeters from the original one. I'm just doing it by eye at this point, okay? Maybe we can make it slightly higher, so it's less of a point. And what we we'll do is, so essentially this will become our, this pattern down here, and this one will become our new pattern. So we have to essentially move all of this space here into this top pattern but obviously we have this curved dart which can make it a little bit tricky um, as you see we have this open dart here so I need to move this space to here and there's a really handy way of doing this so what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna let's say create a guideline just at this point here and I'm also going to take the center of that all the way to those two points there so we're kind of creating the center of this dart and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this line here I'm going to copy it across and I'm just going to expand that down, I'm going to make a few more of these. There we go, that's great. And let's just move it up to that line. So they're all resting on that top line, okay? And you know what? We can actually make these uh, dotted so we can actually see what we're doing. There we go, okay. 
Now what I'm going to do is, essentially I need to move this space here to this top panel. So all I'm going to do is, I'm going to take the measurement here. So I'm just going to cut that. Let's make that blue so we can see what part of the block we're taking. There we go. I'm going to take that and I'm going to move it pretty much up to there. So I'm transferring the space that we have here to here. And then when we redraw our new line, we will have this included in it. And I'm just going to simply show you how we do that. So let's just draw the distance between these two. I'm going to move that up. Let's just draw the distance between these two. I'm going to move that up as well. I'm going to keep going. As you can see, we're basically moving the distance here. Oops, that one's a bit too long. Sorry, let's bring that down. There we go. Let's move that up. Same with this one here. Distance, and let's move that up to that, that upper line. Okay, so now we can remove our guidelines. And this one, we can also remove all this as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make these lines a little bit lighter. And I'm going to draw in my new line. Okay, so I'm basically transferring this area to this top panel here. I'm just going to click from here, which is our starting point, and this is our finishing point. Let's just make that a little bit lighter so we can see what we're doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get, I'm just going to curve that line using those guides. You see, and it's not going to be exactly perfect, but it'll give you an idea. So as you can see here, we've transferred this area to this top panel here, creating a brand new. So let's just link these up. We can get rid of that existing line. Let's just join these. We can also remove this panel as well. And we can join these. And here we can just move this down. And we can then join that. We can also get rid of these blue lines. We don't need them anymore. There we go. Let's take this panel. And there we go. OK, so now we can move this away. And we now have this new chevron, okay? But we still have that dart in place, so we're still going to be following the line of the body. We've just changed the position of that dart and changed that dart entirely. So that's essentially how we create that lovely sort of like chevron detail on the front, which is great. So we've done that, we can now move on. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flatten that line out ever so slightly here. There we go. It's a bit better. Okay, so let's also just average that a little bit. Smashing. Okay, so now we have the front and the back, which has this lovely chevron detail. So let's take the back first, which is this black block. And this is the back panel over here. So what I'm going to do is I don't want a line down the back here. This is simply just a to show you that's the center of the back. Okay, we don't actually want that. Oop. We've lost a bit, so let's put that back in place. Group. Okay, so now let's take the back panel, which is this uh, this red one, this, sorry, this black one here. So what I'm going to do is, I don't want this line down the back at all. So what I'm going to do is essentially just copy and paste or transform these out. Let's reflect and then hit copy. And then I'm going to move that so that it matches. So it's a mirror image. And then just going to join these two together. Same with this one. Oops. Join those. I can also get rid of some of this content. I don't need this because it's duplicated. Don't need that either. Oops. Get rid of that. We can also get rid of this. And this. Oops. There we go. Okay, so let's just add in our center back so we can actually locate it and see where it is. There we go, let's give that a line width of about 2 and dash line of 3010, that's a little bit larger, that's great. Let's also just separate it from the top, so the top is separate to the bottom. Okay, great. So that's now our back piece, which is looking great. Let's just move this over. So, essentially, um, because I want this to actually trail on the ground, this robe, I want it to be slightly higher than the front. Now, at the moment, I think we typed into our system, we want it to be 107.5 centimeters long, which is um, the length, the max length you're allowed on Pattern Lab. We're going to change that. But now, let's say I want to make the back much longer than the front. So, I want this to be 
let's say at the moment it's 107 and we can find that out from measuring from the top to the bottom here, so 107.5 from the waistline to the hem of the dress. Let's say I want to add another 20 cent or 15 centimeters onto the bottom of that dress. Really simple. All I do is just get those points at the bottom. I'm just going to move it down by 15 and hit OK. So now the back is longer than the front. And also, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take these side seams and I'm going to average them. OK, so now the front is shorter than the back. And we can also move this up to match. You see how that pink line is showing us. OK, great. So we now have our back, which is far longer than the front, and we have that line to prove it. Um, so next what we're going to do is we're going to actually start to create these panels here. And to do that, what I do is I'm going to mark this as red just so it's obvious what it actually is. Just take off the dashed line. So we have the red block, but now what about the blue block? Well, first of all, I need to create the red one before I can, let's say, transform it over to the opposite side. So let's just transform, reflect, then go copy, and let's just move this over, and we'll do the same thing that we did with the back. We're just going to join these blocks together. Oops. There we go. Perfect, so we've joined these ones. Now let's join these ones. Lovely, not sure what's happened there with that panel. OK, that's better. And we can also get rid of this redundant content here. We don't actually need it anymore. Lovely. And let's just put in that guideline. just so we can tell where the actual front is of this block. Great, and let's mark that red as well. OK, so that's our red front panel. OK, so what I need to do is I need to find out where this opening is going to be on my garment. OK, so we have this lovely opening. Let's have a look just here. So I need to find out whereabouts on the side of the body it's going to be. Now, I think I'm going to go for half the waist and half the hip. So I'm going to measure the distance between, and obviously we're going to have it on this right side as well. So we're doing it to this panel here. So I'm going to measure the distance between the waistline, which is 18.61. We're going to go 18.61, my maths is terrible, divided by 2, which is 9.3. So let's just make a little point. There we go. Let's go 9.3. We're going to move that to the right, hit copy. And I'm just going to rotate that up until it hits that line. So I know that that is now pretty much half the distance from the center front. This is where my my actual um, crossover panel is going to be. Let's also go half of this seam as well. So that's 24.99 is 12.4. Great, let's take that point. Let's go 12.4, 0, copy. Let's then rotate that up. Now I'm going to rotate it up to the top uh, block or panel of that skirt. And I'm also going to just copy that down, rotate it to the bottom of the block so I know where it exists on both those panels. Let's just draw a line between those two points. So this is a line between the top one and the bottom one of that panel. We can make that a thick line. And let's find our hip. Now our hip, there we go, is that little point just there. So let's just draw a guideline out. There we go. That's our hip line. Let's go 10 and 5. Great, now I'm going to make the distance between these two points, which is going to be, oops, cancel. So I'm just going to draw and have a look at that. So it's 24.86. So let's go 24.86 divided by 2 is 12.43. Let's get that point and go 12.43, zero horizontally, or vertically, sorry, copy. And let's draw another line. So I'm going to go from the bottom one to the hip. And you see that's only slightly further out. And also I'm just going to curve that just to create a nice smooth curve to follow that lovely side seam. And then we're just going to translate that point all the way to the bottom. So that's essentially this panel here. Okay, we've just drawn this, uh, let's say, side seam. Oh, sorry, not side seam, this, uh, let's say, this fold over and then obviously that opening on the three quarters of the body. Great, so now what I'm doing is I'm just going to get rid of all of these points because we don't actually need them anymore. They've served their purpose, don't want them to get in the way. Oops, not the line, we need the line. Okay, great. Fab, so this is our top panel. So now what we're going to do is I'm just going to take this whole piece here, I'm just going to group it, and I'm going to transform it to, I'm going to reflect, I'm going to transfer it and copy it over. Like that. And once again, not sure why that's doing that. It's better. 
Okay, and let's mark this blue. So you can see the difference in these. Smashing. Okay, so we're almost there. So now essentially what we need to do is remove this section. Okay? We want to keep we want to remove this section and we want to remove this section to create our panels. So let's do it to the red one first of all. So I'm just going to simply snip here and here and just get rid of that piece completely. I'm then going to join these two. Let's consolidate it. And then here I'm going to do exactly the same. I'm just going to snip. Actually, no, I'm not going to snip there yet because essentially we need to draw in this line. So what I'm going to do is I found my... I actually need this line. So I need to find this line on the opposite side because essentially that's where this line is because the two need to be joined. So this needs to match with this. So I need to find out where that curve is from here to here. So I'm going to take this line. But first of all, I'm going to draw a line from here to here. Let's just get these together. I'm going to grab these two. I'm going to transform and I'm going to reflect and I'm going to copy it and I'm just going to drag it across. And that didn't work. Hang on. I'm just going to drag it across and I'm using that line to give me a guide as to where the other one's going to be. Okay, so I've taken this line and this and I've just reflected across and used that line for the center front. I hope that makes sense. Once again, this isn't really a tutorial, it's more like an overview or an insight into what I'm doing. When we actually have this fit pattern finished, I will show you how to do this. Um, you know from scratch, point to point, in really clear detail so that you can actually apply it to your own blocks and your own sizes and create this garment in your own size, which is very fun. Okay, so now we can essentially get rid of... Let's join this line first of all, this line to this line here. So I'm going to go from this point to this point and let's just flex it up. And I'm going to bear in mind the kind of the curvature from this line here. And that's our line. Next, let's just simply snip this, get rid of it. Let's then join these two lines. And now I can actually get rid of this whole side panel here. So let's snip and snip and get rid of it. And we can also get rid of this line. So now you can see we've pretty much translated. It's the same thing. Okay, what we've actually created here is what we've created here. So it's looking great. Let me just get that guideline on the actual garment. Great. And we can then just clean this pattern up a little bit. Let's get that line up because we need it for this top panel. Okay, so that's the right hand side or the left hand side of our garment. Now we're going to do the right hand side. So essentially this point here uh, needs to match. We have that split opening. So I want to get rid of this whole left hand side here. There we go. We just want to get rid of it. And as you can see, that now matches this block. And I also want to get rid of this little edge on the end of here. So I'm just going to get rid of that and get rid of that. Oops. Okay, we can now join this together. Consolidate the block. And there is pretty much our opening, our side seam opening. You see? And what I'll do is I'm going to group these and fold it over so you can actually see how this works. So let's just transform, reflect, and then go OK. Drag it across. And then we do the same for this one. Transform, reflect, OK, drag it across. There we go. And so that's essentially how these work. Let me take this off to the side so you can see it. And let's just move this over a bit. The back is always slightly larger than the front, that's why. So now, as you can see, we have our overlap here. not overly clear. Um, essentially what we have here is this. There we go. But we've just done it with our pattern. There we go. So that is essentially it. So let me just go back to where we were so the pattern's no longer destroyed. There we go. Okay, so now what we need to do is basically have a look at this bottom edge shaping because at the moment it's very square and we could essentially leave it like that but it won't be particularly pretty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock everything. I'm going to get my pen and I'm going to go from the hip, okay? And I'm going to go down to the back of the dress, the hem, and then go to the other hip. And now I'm going to get my curve tool. I'm just going to curve it by eye. Now I want this to remain straight as it comes down. I don't want it to kind of I don't want it to come out because that would just be odd. 
So I want this to extend down, and I want this one to extend down. And you know what? I'm going to take the same distance. So let's just extend that down with that bezier, and let's extend this one out. And that is our shape. And I'm literally, I'm just eyeballing this. You could probably measure it and calculate it, but I'm just doing this for, uh, for the sake of showing you guys how we actually did that. Okay, so next what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove this whole bottom edge of the pattern. Same with this one. We can remove it here. Same with this one. Let's remove it here. This one. Let's remove it at the hip. That's great. And then we can just simply take this. Oops take the existing redundant pattern and then we can just make it almost invisible. Same with this one. Let's just grey it out, make it dash so we can't really see it anymore. I'm going to move this line up where it actually hits the garment. Same with this one. Okay, let's take this line here. Okay, we need to do a few more we need to do a few cuts. going to snip, snip there as well. We actually need the line of this block in here. There we go. Lovely. Let's extend that down. Extend that one down as well. Okay, so now we can actually consolidate these all into one complete pattern. So this top panel here is completely re a separate piece. So let's move that up. And then we have this one which is a completely separate piece as well. We can move that one up. This one is essentially the same as this, but we're just going to move it up and separate it just so you can see the whole pattern here. That needs to get cut. Hang on. There we go. Let's move that up. So now we need to consolidate this whole bottom panel so it's one unique item. So to do that, I'm just simply going to join these lines together. Join. We're going to snip this here, we're going to join that, we're going to join those two, so we have this top edge. Let's just make that a bit thicker so you can see what we're doing. And let's also make it black. There we go, so we're just joining these together now. Join. Join this line. Okay, I think that's pretty much all of it. That's great. Let's just make that a bit thicker and darker. And now all these lines in between we can get rid of. Let's put that hip line all the way across. Let's make it, um, give it a dash guideline. We don't need all these this information here anymore. We can get rid of all that because it's one big pattern we're going to use here, which is great. We've got that central um, grey line. Let's change this to be a guideline. Okay, and that's pretty much our pattern. Looking fab. And let's also change this to be black. Okay, and that is our finished pattern. Looking lovely. Uh, there is one thing we need to do, though, is probably add some notches to this, just to help ease the uh, pattern. In other words, so when we actually start putting this together, it'll make sense. So let's just move this back into position. And let's just create a notch about here. One. Let's just rotate that so it's parallel to that line. Let's do the same on the opposite side. And let's just group those ones. So that's that one. And let's just group that. Let's also move this one down. We kind of already have some notches here, but let's just get rid of them. Actually, let's take this one. Let's go one. Let's move it into position. Do the same with this one. Move that one into the position. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flip this opposite to the opposite side and just use a guideline to help me do that. Reflect. Copy. Okay, there we go, lovely. And let's just add these. That can go. Group. Then this one to this one. Group. 
move that apart. There are not there are our notches. And let's do the same with this side. In fact, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use because essentially it's the same pattern. We wouldn't need to cut this twice. I'm just going to go transform, reflect, copy, move it across. You see how it's exactly the same? Once we get it into position anyway, exactly the same. Let's just move that down, get rid of the existing one, and then add in our notch. OK. Make it right angles. Let's get the line thickness. So this one can go up, and this can be joined. And that is our skirt pattern finished, which is great. Let's get rid of that because we use it here. Group. Let's get that one. Group. OK. Let's make it the same width as our pattern. OK, so that's it. That's pretty much our garment. The first initial um, pattern for this particular garment. I know it seems like a, a lot of work and it seems a bit crazy, but it's actually not that bad once you get the hang of it or once you understand the concept of how this thing closes. So now we're pretty much ready to sample this up in Calico and actually test it on Francesca and see what it looks like. So really exciting. Um, okay, so the next step, what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna show you, I mean, well, actually, I'm gonna show you how to add seam allowance to this and then obviously put this onto an A4 PDF template so you can print it out on your home printer. Um, as I said, this isn't really a tutorial, so I might not focus too heavily on that. And we do have tutorials on, on site already that show you how to do that. But um, let me show you a really nifty trick. If you wanna add seam allowance to this, just get your small selection tool. Click on the pattern outline, go to edit, uh, sorry, no wait, object, path, and then offset path. And then here you want to type in 1cm if you want 1cm seam allowance. You could put in 2.5 if you want an inch, whatever you want. Put in 0.5 if you like. I want to put 1cm, mitre width or limit, just put 10. You can preview it and then just click OK. And it applies it to it. Wait, that hasn't worked properly. And the reason why is because it needs to be one whole unit. Let's try that again. So if basically if this has like a cut in it, it'll apply that seam allowance to all of it inside and out. But if it's one contained piece, object, path, offset path, preview, there you go, click OK, and there's your seam allowance. And how easy and quick is that in comparison to doing this manually? Let's just reduce the inner one, and there you've got a beautiful pattern. So I'm just going to do this to pretty much every single one of my pattern pieces now. I'm going to do it all in one go. I'm just selecting that line, the outside line. Just going to go object, path, offset path, 1cm, preview, OK, done. Let's go for the inner line. Inner line, just queue up my selection by holding down the shift key. And then there we go. Oops, I'm down here, we haven't done. Okay, we've added our seam allowance. Okay, but there is actually one last thing that I need to do before we actually print this out and start, um, let's say, making this in material. I need to add a facing to this front, uh, let's say this front opening, just obviously because it's uh, going to be cleaner when it comes to sampling up um, and we won't have this raw edge. So really simple, uh, all I'm going to do is essentially, let's just grab this line here, I'm going to cut it out. I'm just going to go back, in fact, let's go object, and then path, and then offset path. Let's go 4.5, let's go 10, let's preview it. So we're going to go 4.5 back from this line here, going to click OK. And we can just simply snip here, snip here, and then get rid of that existing line. Let's just duplicate that one, and let's join, and join. join. Let's just consolidate it. Lovely. Let's make it a little bit thicker so we can see. I'm going to do exactly the same for this line here. Just going to snip and snip. I'm going to go object. Let's go path. Offset path 4.5. Preview it. Click OK. And then let's just snip here and here. Let's remove that upper piece. Let's also duplicate this. Just hold my Alt key and arrow keys. Join, join, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to <coughs> I'm going to take this panel, I'm going to copy it, I'm going to paste it, and this is just so I can match up. Oops, just so I can match these two up. 
So let's just snip here and snip here. Let's just join here and here. Oops, made a bit of a mistake. There we go. I can now get rid of this block. I can now grab this one and this one. Oops. Let's ungroup that. Ungroup. There we go. Let's move that off. Let's make them the same line thickness so we can see our facing. Let's rotate it down. Let's make sure it's aligned so we can add a grain line to it. There we go. And I'm just going to basically merge those two together like that. Let's get rid of a few of these points. Oops. Okay, it's a little bit messy there. Let's not do that actually. Let's snip. Actually, you know what? It's fine. It's not a big deal. It's just a sample. I'm not overly upset about that little notch there. Just average it. Okay. So that's our new facing panel, which is looking fab. And we can add some notches to this as well. So let's put it in its place. Remove the existing one. And let's add some notches. So we're going to have one at the shoulder. Okay, hang on a minute, we want that notch to be here. And let's do one on the main body. And then let's just select those notches, let's select that panel. There we go, our notch is on the main body of this one, which is great. Let's group that. We can move our bus line in a bit. There we go. We can actually get rid of this content here. We don't actually need it anymore. And then let's just put object path, offset path, one centimeter, OK. Smashing. Done. Let's group that. And there we have our facing. Okay, so now we've finished our pattern and created our facing for the front. I'm just going to basically grab all of these and put them into our A4 PDF document, which will allow us to then print them out, um, print this pattern out full scale um, on a series of A4 pages, which we can then piece together. As you can see, it's quite a big pattern. Um, I've actually increased the size of our A4 print template, which will be available with the on-site and also with this uh, little kind of pseudo-tutorial that we're doing here. So I'm just now going to rearrange these so we get the best possible fit for the amount of pages. This might take a bit of time, so I'm going to speed this process up. Okay, so that's uh, pretty much the layout for this uh, pattern. So now I'm just going to basically remove all of the artboards that we don't need. <coughs> Great, okay, ready to save and ready to print. I'm just going to save that in the same folder. Um, there we go, lovely. Okay, now we can just simply print those and we were ready to start piecing this together.